Hey folks, uh, this is a quick video showcasing a, a tool I built, an MCP server called FSI MCP, which is a wrapper around the FSI.exe thing that uh, you can use when you're programming in F Sharp. It's the REPL, the read eval print loop. Uh, yeah, I just like build a wrapper around that uh, so that I can have my AI coding assistants work more closely in the same interactive session. Uh, if this is Chinese, uh, please stick around to see how a REPL typically works and how I inject my AI in it. And more specifically, or like more interestingly, what that gives us. So let's first see how these tools uh, do things out of the box. This is a vanilla cloth, I'm using Opus here, uh, web browser. Uh, I'm uploading a Kaggle uh, data set, the video game sales uh, data set. And I'm asking Claude to uh, analyze it and calculate, uh, figure out the best selling video game in this uh, spreadsheet. So curious to see what it does. It's, it's supposed to be pretty good at this stuff. Uh, you can see that it, we uploaded this CSV and now it's doing all kinds of analyses on it. It's God, it's doing God knows what. <laughs> it's reading the file. It can see the structure. It's running Python. It's using pandas. So that's a data science library, data frame stuff. So yeah, it's doing what I thought it would do, which is actually pretty amazing <laughs> that this is like browser based. Uh, it's all happening in front of my eyes. So I'm curious. Uh, to see whether or not it gets the result. It says that Grand Develop 5 is the best selling with 64.29 million in total sales across all platforms. Uh, that sounds correct. So this works, this works great. And this is awesome if you speak fluent uh, Python, because uh, I can look at this code, I can verify whether or not this was correct. But this for me is pushing it. I don't notice the details of data frames. I don't know what all this apply clean sales thing is. I can like try to guess, but I'm not fluent in this is my point. So uh, that got me thinking, what if I could have it do the same, but have it do it with F sharp, like the programming language I know and love. So yeah, let's show that. So now let's try doing the exact same thing, but instead of like defaulting to pandas, Python, uh, Let's try having it do the same in F sharp. So this is the exact same prompt and a couple of additions. Uh, one is the file location because Club really likes to think it's running in Linux and I'm giving it an explicit instruction that this is where the file is. So if it writes code, it references this path <laughs> and not some Unix path. And I'm giving a hint as to what kind of libraries it should be using because Whereas if a LLM uses pandas, uh, Python, sorry, uh, it kind of defaults to using pandas. If it's doing the same in F sharp, uh, it does not have a favorite library. So I'm giving it my favorite library, which is the CSV provider in the F sharp data uh, nugget package. So yeah, let's see how well it does. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, pretty important. There's this F, uh, extra integration, the MCP server, uh, which we built. Uh, which allows it to run and execute F sharp code, of course. And there we go, came up with the answer and it's the exact same answer. It's GTA 5 with 64.29 million in total sales. Uh, but if you now start looking at what it actually did, you can see it's writing F sharp code instead of Python. And it kind of looks heavy, but I read and write this every day. So for me personally, this is easier to parse and follow. Uh, so yeah, get the same results in the programming language you like and love uh, using an MCP server. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now um, we can hook in F sharp instead of Python uh, when I'm chatting to uh, Claude in the desktop. That's cool, but uh, I was more interested in seeing what this means in my development workflow. And what you can see here is Visual Studio Code and some F sharp scripts. And the, the way I'm used to working is I select some code that I'm working on. I hit alt enter and it gets like sent to the REPL, the FSI process down below here, and I can see the results, right? Uh, but if I had like a coding agent on the right, for example, GitHub Copilot, and I would ask it to write code, it could change this file here, but it could not affect this uh, active window, this active FSI server, uh, 
window. It would like run scripts on the side, generate new files on the side, but it was not the same feedback loop I had when or like manually selecting code and sending it. So I was curious, can we get uh, our agents to live inside of this active terminal? And turns out we can because of my MCP server. So let me quickly demo it and then we will go into uh, what makes it work. So let's ask uh, Copilot to work in this file, the scratch.fsx file, and uh, to collaborate using the FSI MCP server. I have like a custom agent mode for it. We'll take a look at that in a second. But now let's ask it to implement something. Let's create a Mandelbrot visualization and let's use Plotly Nougat library for visualizing it. Uh, that's not how you write Mandelbrot. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it was a spelling issue, skill issue, not an LLM issue. And it's a Plotly Nougat library. I'm using a new transcription tool called Handy. Ooh, there we go, Handy, uh, which is free and super fast. It uses like Parakeet or Whisper, uh, and they all run locally. So I'm not sending my speech over to the cloud to the Microsoft overlords, which is why I'm willing to compromise on transcription quality for a bit. But okay, uh, so this is the prompt. I have a, an active script window open and I have an active REPL session where I'm working in. Let's see uh, what my agent does with this information. So it wrote a bunch of code, it added it to the file. Now it's running it in the interactive window. And it's actually my interactive window. So I can take over any second uh, if I want to. I can fix the code any second if I want to. And it says it's done. And a browser window is popping up. So let's see at what uh, it created, shall we? And here we go. It just generated this uh, Mandelbrot sequence uh, visualization. Can we zoom in? Yeah, we can. So that's actually pretty cool, right? It's not infinite zoom, but that's uh, the graph library we're using <laughs> as its limitations. Uh, but I can do stuff like this. So a final thing I wanted to demo was how I actually use it, uh, how I actually uh, use it when I'm writing code. Uh, and I'm gonna show it by like solving a programming puzzle. It's December, which means advent of code. And I have some unsolved puzzles from last year. For example, day 18, I have not solved it. I have read it two seconds ago to get like a feel of the problem, but I have not given it any thought just yet. But I have like everything up and running and I have my same uh, MCP server running and I'm using the same like uh, custom agent or chat mode. So uh, my coding agent acts like a, an FSI interpreter. So I'm just going to give it uh, the full uh, problem. So it knows about the problem. It can probably one shot it, <laughs> but that's not what I want to show. Uh, I want to show how I like interactively work with it. So let's first uh, do some type driven design. I want you to propose uh, some types that we can use to work on this problem. It's proposing locations, uh, union type for cells, memory space, that state. So say I agree. Looks good. Uh, let's add it to the script and run it in FSI. And as you can see, it's adding the code. It's running the code in the interactive window. It's all doing the things you would expect it to do. Now say I don't like ints and I want to change it myself to longs. I can do so manually. I could also ask the agent, but this is just to prove a point. So I changed, I upload uh, this code to uh, the REPL. And it's the same REPL as the agent is using, so I don't have to reload a lot of things. Oh, let me select it correctly. There we go. So uh, it's a very seamless interaction between both agent window, uh, FSX script file, and the interactive window. Okay. Uh, let's continue on. All right, now try to solve the example for me. And also write it as a test in the unquote part. Unquote is the testing library I use. Uh, I have some prompts figuring, uh, telling it where it is. So I'm pretty confident that it'll now start working uh, using these types. It's hopefully pick up that it's longs in the memory space. It doesn't have to be longs. It's a stupid example, but <laughs> it's just to show how I typically work with this stuff. I see 22. Is that the actual uh, solution for part one? 
Yeah, 22 steps, so that looks correct. And I didn't even have to think about the problem, which is scary. These models are getting pretty good, especially if you give them tools like this. Verify, yeah, okay, that's this passing. And now uh, let's just ask it to uh, solve for my input. All right, now run the algorithm on my input file. 314. Which is the correct answer. So uh, this is uh, quite seamless. Uh, this is a very different experience than working with a coding agent uh, that has like is going off running scripts on the side, generating new files on <laughs> on the flying, doing like .NET FSI to execute those scripts. Uh, this brings everything closer together and very close to the way I'm used to working uh, without AI. So yeah, feels very natural to me. So yeah, this was a showcase of my uh, FSI MCP server, and it's one way of how I like tighten my feedback loops when I'm working with AI coding assistants. How do you speed up your feedback loops? Please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.